In this video, we're going to look at causes, different causes of upper GI bleeding. So essentially from your mouth all the way down to the, the duodenum. And um, bleeds around these area can uh, cause the patient to vomit up blood. So hematoemesis. So now let's begin with... So now let us look at some common causes of upper GI bleeding. Beginning with esophagitis, which is essentially inflammation of the esophagus. So here we have the stomach. And here we have an inflamed esophagus. And there are different types of esophagitis. We can have reflux esophagitis, gourd, um, infective esophagitis, chemical irritants can cause inflammation of the esophagus, as well as there's, a, there's eosinophilic esophagitis. And essentially, again, it's this inflammation of the esophagus. But while we're talking about esophagus, let's, let's talk about Barrett's esophagus. And Barrett's esophagus is a, is a condition where cells lining the lower esophagus change in morphology. So the esophagus can be divided into three parts. The, the last part, the third part, um, the cells that, that, that line this area essentially change in shape. So here in this area, we, we normally have no, um, squamous epithelial cells, but these change to Barrett's metaplasia, which can subsequently lead to um, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So um, the relevance of Barrett's esophagus is that change in morphology can lead to adenocarcinoma and also pathological findings reveal that there are goblet cells present in the area when they sh where they shouldn't be. The next condition we're going to talk about is esophageal varices. So here we have the stomach again and here we have the veins um, around the stomach and the esophagus. And esophageal varices uh, develops as a result of portal hypertension, um, usually. And um, esophageal varices is where we have dilated vessels, veins, um, of the esophagus. And these, these dilated veins, when they dilate, they can rupture. And this um, is very um, serious and dangerous. Uh, diagnosis of esophageal varices is um, using an endo um, using endoscope. So let's zoom into this area here of the esophagus and learn a bit more about esophageal varices in a diagram. So here I'm drawing the esophagus and these are the veins uh, that drain the esophagus. And the veins that drain the esophagus contain blood. Now in esophageal varices, blood essentially pools in the area, um, causing the veins uh, these veins to grow and they can subsequently rupture causing serious problems. So here we have varices, the pooling of the blood and uh, the veins that actually drain the esophagus. There are two veins um, and they anastomose with each other. These are from the top, the esophagus vein and the left gastric vein. And these veins, they drain um, later to the portal vein then to the liver. But if you have portal hypertension, which we see in conditions such as liver cirrhosis, um, this blood will backflow to this area, thus leading to esophageal varices. Here I'm drawing an endoscope, which is used to diagnose esophageal varices, but it can be dangerous. And so if we, the, here I'm drawing an image of what we would see if we were to look inside the esophagus. So we can see these prominent bulging veins full of blood, which can rupture again and can and that is going to cause um, hem internal hemorrhage, which is very dangerous. The next condition we're going to talk about is Mallory-Weiss syndrome. Mallory-Weiss syndrome um, has to do with the connection between the esophagus and the stomach. And essentially, it's where we have a tear. So in Mallory-Weiss syndrome, we have longitudinal tears near the cardioesophageal junction. These are superficial lacerations. So if we were to zoom in, in the area, these are the Mallory Weiss tears. Mallory Weiss syndrome is associated with chronic vomiting, retching, coughing, and straining. The next cause of upper GI bleeds is um, we can have erosive gastritis. Now, erosive gastritis um, has to do with the stomach. So, here we're looking into the stomach and we have essentially erosions within the layer of the stomach. So gastri uh, erosive gastritis is gastric mucosal erosion uh, caused by damage to the mucosal defense. We can have bleeding 
uh, with few or no symptoms. We diagnose it using an endoscope. Treatment includes proton pump inhibitors or H2 blockers, which essentially work by uh, stopping acid secretion. Causes of erosive gastritis include use of NSAIDs, alcohol, and stress. The next potential cause of upper GI bleeding are mass lesions, which, and what I'm talking about, are polyps and essentially tumors, cancer. So, for example, we can have mass lesions, which are esophageal tumors, which, are, uh, which can be ad um, adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. And we talked about how Barrett's esophagus can lead to adenocarcinoma due to the metaplasia that occurs at the lower part of the esophagus. Now we can have also growths within the stomach. The, they can be benign tumors or malignant tumors. Let's talk about benign tumors. We can have few types. There can be inflammation and hyperplastic polyps, fundic gland polyps, and gran, um, gastric adenomas. Malignant tumors of the stomach. There are a few types. Um, these can be gastric carcinoma, which is the most common, um, up to 95%. We can have gastric lymphomas, roughly 5%, and then carcinoid tumors and stromal cell tumors, which are less common. The next condition is Dulafoy's lesion, uh, which is also known as a caliber persistent artery. And it's a rare but potentially life-threatening because it causes hemorrhage of the GIT. And as the name suggests, as the other name suggests, caliber persistent artery, it has to do with the artery of, uh, that supplies the stomach. So essentially, if we were to zoom into the stomach here and we were to look at it through an endoscope, we would see that it's essentially where we have a bulging of um, a lesion. And this lesion could subsequently rupture, causing a hemorrhage because of the, art, like the, blood uh, the, the blood that supplies the area. And this can cause severe internal bleeding, which um, can be fatal. Um, the next potential cause of uh, upper GI bleed is known as angiodysplasia, and it's a common vascular abnormality in the GI tract. Um, it's similar to telangiectasia, and it, and it occurs like all, all around the GIT, but mainly the colon. Um, anyway, the morphology of angiodysplasia is that it's, we have elastic, dilated, thin-walled vessels um, that are lined by endothelium alone. And as I, as I mentioned, it's most often seen in the colon, but we can also see it in the stomach. So if we were to look uh, into the stomach here using an endoscope, um, this, we would see um, angi a potentially angiodysplasia um, such as this. The next condition is a very common cause of upper GI bleed. It's just ulceration. Ulceration is erosion of the mucous membrane. Um, and, it's, and it is similar, like the risk factors and stuff are similar to uh, gastritis, but it is a, technically a different condition. Uh, risk factors for ulcer formation in the stomach include excess uh, hydrochloric acid, acid secretion, which is caused, which can be caused by a few things, helicobacter pylori infection, use of NSAIDs and stress. And ulcers can occur not only in the stomach, but also the duodenum. So we can have duodenal ulcers and gastric ulcers. So just looking at a duodenal ulcer here, it's more common than a gastric ulcer, by the way. So here I'm drawing the layers um, of the duodenum. Here's a lumen, and here we have an ulcer, which is an erosion that goes down through the mucosa, submucosa. Gastric ulcer, similar thing. We now we can have complications with ulcers. There can be bleeding. We can have perforation, um, as well as narrowing and obstruction. Perforation means that the content can perforate into the peritoneum, which can cause peritonitis and severe inflammation and pain. So those were some causes of uh, upper GI bleeds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.